Steve Cordoni's name is synonymous with style. He's a predominant force in the interiors and lifestyling world. His impeccable taste and eye for current trends have helped create exquisite events and he's collaborated with a vast number of beautiful brands, media outlets and publications. Steve sits at the helm of Australia's Bell magazine as style director at large, where his work inspires everyday Australians to pay more attention to making their homes even more beautiful. Steve's style credentials are inbuilt, growing up with a mum who was an interior decorator. So you could say it is in his blood. If you have poured yourself over his Instagram feed like I have, you will find his page filled with styling workshop tips and tricks and the current renovation of his Georgian homestead, Rosdale Farm in Orange, alongside his partner, Michael, dogs and a myriad of farm animals. It will soon be a luxurious, sustainable farm stay. And I wanna be the first guest to stay, please. I first met Steve when he graced our house with his magic styling wand in a shoot we did for Bell magazine. It was love at first meet. He gave me many ideas, tips and tricks to consider in our space and I can see firsthand why he is the go-to guy for everything interiors. From tablescaping, yes, that's a thing, to small details and full out renovations, Steve truly knows his stuff. I am so happy to welcome him back into my home again as my guest today. Here is Steve Cordoni. Steve Cordoni, what an absolute pleasure and nerve wracking moment having you back in my home. No reason to be nervous, it's <laughs> stunning. No, but it is very nerve wracking when someone of your calibre walks into your home because last night I was having a tiny freak out just going, tidy everything, put it in a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Oh, Thank you for coming for tea. We are drinking you, yes. lemon and ginger. Mm -hmm. My Cheers favorite. to us. Cheers. Cheers. We should probably drink because it's Have a little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to get tepid. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's My good. Fave. My favorite. Oh, good. Mm. Now, I want to go there today. Please. I want to go there. I feel like we know you, Steve Cordoni, as you know, in interiors extraordinaire, everything you touch turns to gold and looks beautiful and you wave your magic wand over everything and it's just like <laughs> unbelievable. My gold wand. Yes, yeah. and Rosdale <laughs> Farm and all the beautiful things. But I know that life isn't always beautiful and it's not always an Instagram post and it's not that shiny at mm. all times. Mm -hmm. And to get to that point, a lot of hard work and a lot of things have to go wrong in order to to get to the shiny part. Yeah, so I wanna, I wanna talk about some of those things today, yeah. if you're up for it. Let's go Oprah. Let's go Oprah, yeah. <laughs> let's just do it. Let's get there, let's go Super Jules. Super Soul Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So can you take me back, um, in in the intro, I mentioned about your mum uh, yeah. was an interior, was she a designer, decorator? A decorator. Yeah. So lots of colors and my dad's a builder and property developer. So always been around renovation and the home. But more than that, just from a design point of view, it was always how the home felt. So mum would always have candles on. She would also have a nice dinner and style the table rather than just sit down, let's eat. It was napery, it was all those different things. And it was funny because when, when you're growing up, you don't really put two and two together. But now looking back, I was like, oh, that's right. I was always around it. I was always loving you know, the colors and watching it. Maybe when I was growing up, I wasn't really aware of it but now everything makes sense and it just has come full circle. But do you feel like now that you have grown up in that way, mm. it's like impossible for it not to be done in that way? Do yes. you feel like there's like, cause sometimes I think it's like almost, it's like blessing or curse. Yeah. Or it's, uh -huh. you're, I sometimes I'm so erratic about how things look and, yeah. and where things are placed and how tidy things are, yes. that it becomes a bit of a curse because yes. you're just constantly in your mind just mm. going, I need to move that, that doesn't look good. That's, that's a mess over there, that pile needs to be moved. Yeah. Are you like that? Yes, and part of that is obviously growing up and having nice things and all that kind of thing. But the main thing is my life for so many years was just photo shoots. So making homes, you know, I go to homes, I make them look the best they can look for the magazine spread, which is great and beautiful. But now in my mind, I'll walk through my house, I'm like, that doesn't look right. Why is that messy? So it's really hard to kind of compartmentalize, no, this is not a photo shoot, mm -hmm. this is real life. Yes. So I try to keep things, I think it's all about organization and editing, but it's still not always perfect. It can never be. Yeah. So you have to kind of just embrace that imperfection and, and just go with it. 
It's hard though. It's very it hard. is hard. <laughs> I'm sort of like things just need to be. I know. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And that's not even my job. I know, yeah. So growing up in your home, in mm. your household, what was the feeling? What was the vibe? What was the what was the atmosphere? It was always just love because we were tight the family. You know, my mum's Maltese, my dad's Italian, so always sort of around family, and it was always dinners and lunches and, and celebrations. So, and not every, you know, it was a, it sounds, it sounds like the Brady Bunch, um, but it was just always, you know, full of people and enjoying those celebratory times. So, I think for me now, when people come to my home um, or our home, I should say, Michael and I, uh, it's about kind of that intangible feeling that people get when they come to the house. Yes, it's styled, and yes, it's pretty edited and, and, and nice, but it needs to have a soul and a sense of purpose and place and, and, and homeliness. And that's where you get the difference between a house and a home. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're, you grew up in a home. In a home. Full of love. Yeah. Full of comfortable yeah. things. Yeah. Lots of, did, did you feel like you were personally as a boy mm. comfortable enough to be your truer self? I always felt sort of love and home and, and felt like myself. But growing up more into the teens, I, I put that not perfect well, because it wasn't perfect by any means, but just that home, that home and the white picket fence and this sort of storyboard image in my mind in terms of what I was feeling at the time, which is struggling to come out when I was sort of in my teens. So that was also another kind of dichotomy between this is the perfect image in my mind, do I think I'm ever gonna have it? And so that for me was probably a struggle. So thinking about your family, mum, dad, family, kids. Yes. And you're thinking, I, I, I am not like that, therefore, Mm. It's going to look so different, different. for me. I'm yeah. not going to have this home. It's not going to be the same. Yet. Correct. And that was, that was hard. How old really were you hard. when all of that was happening? I had little inklings and thoughts about it sort of early teens and into my late teens. And I, I came up quite late, so probably 24 or 25. And so I think I just suppressed quite a lot of that. But every now and then you have these sort of thoughts. You're like, oh, that's not going to be me. That's fine. I'll just stay neutral. And so... The, the older I got and the more I was doing in terms of work, it just got harder and harder. It got and really were, hard. Were you just not, you were just like not girls, not boys, just no Neutral. <laughs> just, yeah. Yep. Didn't have a girlfriend, didn't have a boyfriend, yep. just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Just have fun with friends, go to school, go to work, whatever it was, just don't even think about it. Did people question that? Not as much as you thought. Like I, I thought I would have got sort of bullied more at school in high school and I didn't really. I think I was sort of friends with like the cool hot chicks. And so like the football, it was so just like, it was probably more my thoughts, mm. to be honest, sort of projected onto whoever around me. And I, I was outgoing when I was out with my friends and then quite insular when I was at home. Mm -hmm. So that was hard. But I just, yeah, I just stayed neutral. Yeah. Just no one asked me. And if they did, I probably would just give them a fake answer or, oh, yeah, not interested, you know, just happy, whatever it was mm -hmm. that I, you know, made up at the time. But, and I think, and same with my family, no one was sort of coming to me all the time going, you know, how do you feel? What about this? They were there and supportive. And I knew deep down they wouldn't have a problem because they did not. My dad wanted to throw me a coming out party when I finally did come out. Wow. Um, so that was all there, but it's just, the build up in your mind and, and that's really processing hard. of it and, and, processing. and figuring it out for yourself and to be sure of it yeah, as well correct and when you're ready at what time and yeah. i didn't know when that was but it happened everything happens for a reason and i believe that and so you know it happened in the right time mm -hmm. but it, it was a struggle for a few years there. how did it happen i think i got to a point and i was pretty flat and pretty low and this is actually probably the first time I've talked about this, so this could get quite emotional, Jules. It's fine. <laughs> no, it was, it was actually, I think I just got to a point and I was just so tired of thinking about it and sort of thinking this and seeing other people being happy and, and not that I was jealous or anything. It was just sort of hard and I thought, you know, can I, why can't I have this? Mm. And, and I had all the support around me. I had, I had everyone that I knew would be really supportive and really rooting for me, but you build up this thing in your mind. And so I was about to head overseas with some friends to Fiji and, and I had a really bad evening the night before and I was just really low and sort of crying about it. So I wrote a letter to my parents and I can't, I can't exactly remember what happened, but 
I think I either just left it out in the bedroom or somewhere, just not, you know, I didn't go and give it to them and go read that while I'm away and, you know, we don't need to talk about it. Um, but this was out and I don't, well, don't know if it was my best friend who kind of passed it on or just left, anyway, they read it. They called me when I was overseas and it was both mum and dad and they just said, we couldn't love you anymore. It doesn't matter to us who you love. We are there for you 100%. Come home, we love you. And it was just as easy as that. Yeah. So it is, it, it is always harder for you. And now, you know, not that I want to be out there and helping other people, but when I see people struggling with it, I just, it's hard because you can't just go and, you know, tell me how you feel, let's just do it. Let's just cut that. You've got to work it out mm-hmm. to a point in your own mind and when you're ready. Mm-hmm. But it's hard because being through it, you just want to, you don't want everyone to kind of have to deal with those thoughts or struggle with it because there's nothing wrong with it. No, yeah. that's right. You know, it is who you are. Exactly right. Exactly right. And so when you got to that point, I can only imagine the feeling because I've never had to process anything like that in my mm. own body. Yeah. But I can imagine that sense of absolute relief mm. and being released into your truest identity, yeah. I suppose. Because identity Absolutely. is something I think as, you know, as children, as teens, as, you know, young adults and then fully fledged adults, you yeah. you are constantly chasing that that sense of identity and who, who you, you are, are in this world yeah. and what's your purpose and why you exist and what's yeah. the reason for all of this and um, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining going through that questioning of who, who you, you are yeah who yeah. you are I mean you do that who can anyway I be now? who can I be now what does this mean for the future Correct. all of those things so yeah. was that did you feel like a sense of release into your true identity I definitely felt release and, and relief and sort of like and everything from there, because it was probably 24, 25. So I was starting out in my career, I just finished studying and I was just sort of starting assisting and getting into the styling world. Um, and it's funny from that point, and I feel like throughout our lives we have chapters and we have sort of markers. And that was definitely one. Because then from there, it just, everything went up. Mm-hmm. So that was the best thing, but it, it was still a bit scary. Like even just having those first conversations, you know, my sister came and saw me and then my brother and, and it's just, it's a, it's, it's almost like a switching of, okay, that was that old person who had something to hide. Now this is the new person. Yes. And so that's a, it was a little bit awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm trying not to be poignant in how I can release that, but it was, it was just an honest conversation. And then I just felt more at ease, yeah. you know, with mm-hmm. who I was internally. Mm-hmm. And so it was just a more open, honest conversation with everyone. Yep. So that was really liberating. Yeah. And then you can be, who you are in the, on the inside, you can be Correct. that person and on the, the outside. outside. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's all encompassing. And yeah. then, you know, everything goes from there. And, and unless you know who you are inside um, and as a person and your true identity, and that shifts and it changes over time. It does, you know, getting older, it just is a natural thing. But having that shift and finalizing that sort of component um, and part of your life, it was just, yeah, it was a good feeling so happy for you (laughs) and what what do you think because I think a lot about my purpose in the world Mm. and I don't know if that's because I'm like a church girl from way back and you know we talked a lot of that about that growing up yeah um what's your purpose what are you here for what's your reason Mm. you know what are you going to do with your life what's your goals what's your dreams all those things what do you think your purpose is that's a big question it's a big question it's heavy (laughs) But, and it's so funny because every now and then I'll, I'll be quite, you know, funny and snarl about it. So, you know, when I get really stressed about an install or a project or a photo shoot or whatever I'm doing, I'll stop myself and say, I'm not saving lives here, you know, and I'm not, that I know that I'm making things beautiful, but that is also a nice part of life and what I do. And so for me, there's a beautiful quote, which is one of my favorite quotes by Lisa DeWolf and it's, um, I'm going to make everything around me beautiful. That will be my life. Very shallow, I get it. It's just all very beautiful and pretty. And and that is effectively what my life is, interiors and making a home. But now, I think this year, even more than any year before, it is about having that beautiful home and how you feel at home Mm -hmm. and the connection we have to our homes. So if that's my life's purpose, then I'm happy with that. You know, I'm never going to be a brain surgeon. (laughs) Neither. Not very good at maths or anything else like that. But making things pretty. I can do. But I think it's an important <laughs> role yeah. in life. Yeah. How important do you think our space at home oh, is? Huge. To our mental health, to our feelings, to our mood. Everything. 
everything. Just as we put on a great dress, like you're in a fabulous dress today, you feel good, right? You get your hair done, you get makeup done, whatever it is, you feel good. When you come home, if everything is sort of a mess or whatever it is, and you can, it can be various different styles or trends or whatever you've got going on at home, but it should represent the person or the personalities that live there. Mm. And that's how you make a house a home. It's, we spend so much time at home. It should be our kind of, our little world, our little sort of extension of our personalities and, and families and, and travels and, and journeys that we've been on. So for me, that's, I'll style something to the nth degree and make it beautiful and perfect and gorgeous and styled, but it needs to have those elements that create a home and have you have a soul to the, to the space. So I agree. that's the key. Do you think that, you know, some people can live in clutter and mm. chaos mm -hmm. and they just get on with their thrive. lives and it's fine and yep. they thrive? Yep. What is that? Because I am not that. Um, I can't, I can't do yeah. anything else no. until my house is tidy. And I have moments of that. Like if I'm in the office or something and I've got samples everywhere and I just need to be enthralled and enveloped mm -hmm. in in creative chaos yes. because my brain is just all creative. Mm -hmm. It just works like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. But I think you need to kind of edit, you know, and I'll quickly tidy enough at the end because I can't have it looking like that. But I think if it's an edited chaos, that's totally fine. And everyone's different. Everyone's not gonna, you know, there might be some people that are completely minimal. There might be some people that want wallpapers and fabrics and all these different things on every different wall, yeah. which is totally fine. But I think it's just, again, if it represents you and that's how you live and it, it's a, a nice space for you to live in mentally and, and physically, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> this judgment. This is all very beautiful. No judgment. No judgment. <laughs> I'm not judging because this is all beautiful and perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Um, coming back to your relationship, mm, yes. you've mentioned Michael, who yes. has been your partner for almost 11 years almost 11 now. Almost 11 years, I know. So tell me, Crazy. tell me a love story. How did it uh, all come together? Well, we first met at an art gallery exhibition. So the artist was a, dual, a mutual friend of ours. Of course and you did, because that's just so fancy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we met at an art exhibition. I know. Of course you I, did. It wasn't on a you know, CD dance floor or something, but look, fine. Fine if it was. Um, but no, that was the first time. So we had a very brief encounter. Hi, yep, nice to meet you, great, great, great. Did and you, then, was it Sparks or did you notice him? Was it, or this, it was just like a no, do? I, I noticed him, he noticed me, all that kind of stuff, but it was very soon after I'd just kind of come out. And so I was still big guarded, so. And you hadn't had any relationship no, with anyone previous no, to him? No, Wow. So he was, he was the one. And so, anyway, so then the next day he sent me a message as you do in the, in the digital age on Facebook and hey, nice to meet you last night, blah, 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 blah. And I was actually the other day, I, was, I went back on Facebook because there's like 10 messages because then we started texting and I read the first message that he sent oh. me on Facebook because like, oh, Aww. It was very cute. I'll bring that up at the wedding or something. <laughs> and so he messaged me and then I messaged him back and I kind of just, I strung it out for like three months. I was like, oh, I'm just very busy. You know, sorry, I can't catch was up. Was that because you were processing? Like, yes, don't know. Just if weren't I can. ready. Yeah, yeah, correct. Not ready to go yeah. there. Just lovely. You seem nice. Let's just see what happens. Anyway, so then we were at this, um, it was like a field day thing. And, and I saw him with a friend and I was with my best friend and we, I ran up and I was like, no, I was like really nervous. I was like, do I go and say hello? What do I do? Anyway, I ran up and said hello. And then a week later, he cooked me dinner and that was it. That, that was, was it. it. Yep. Done deal. Just done deal. And do you think he's, <laughs> he made it safe for you? Yeah. To, as of your first experience, your first relationship. Yeah. And you're still processing and figuring things out. Yeah. Was he a safety net and just kind totally. of helped you through that? Yeah but it just was natural. It wasn't forced. We sort of caught up every week or, you know, 10 days we spoke. It wasn't just a rush thing. It was just, he probably knew that I was needed time and, and, and to take it slow, I guess. But it just, it wasn't even a conscious thought. It was just, let's hang out. And that's how it grew. And so that was sort of probably the, the best way for me to kind of just go into it. Yeah. So, and it just was easy, yep. you know? And 11 easy. years later, still and going years strong. Later. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what would yeah. you say? And people ask me this and I never mm. really know what to say. So I'm just, I'm interested. Because, <laughs> you know, Guy and mm. I have been together since forever, yeah. since we we're teenagers, basically. Yeah. And like, they're like, what's the secret? But yeah. I, I don't think there's a secret. I think no. there's a lot of things that it takes. But yeah. what do you think some of the foundations are that you've built to have a successful relationship? For me, it's about having a dual commonality 
So in ethics, in how we were brought up, in what we believe in, how we treat others, and that's really common yeah. thread. Just your values and your morals. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the core of what, and I was I was brought up like that, and, and so was Michael with his family. But I also think it's a good thing to have different um, hobbies, different interests, because our worlds are very different, but that's a good thing because we balance off each other. He makes me a better person and I would like to think that I make him a better person. And so I think it's a mix of being similar, but also very different. Mm -hmm. Spending time apart, spending time together. Mm -hmm. And I yes. think that's, is key. Yep. And I think not overthinking that because you know, oh, you were away for that long and I hadn't seen, just making it work. Yep. And you know, when you're out of balance, like yep. we know, like if I'm in the city, he's in the, at the farm and he's sort of working from there or doing what he's doing. We just, you kind of can feel it and the pendulums, you know, it swings. Mm -hmm. So you've just got to come back to that middle ground. Yeah. And that happens. It just does. It's easy just to get annoyed with each other, yeah. let go yes. of it. And that's when things can kind of slide away. Correct. But that's when you just have to hold on for dear life. Correct. And know that it's not ruined. Yeah. It just needs to come back to alignment. It's just out of balance. Yeah. We're yeah. out of kilter. Yeah. And that happened. And then it it's happened many times in our 11 years, mm -hmm. you know, it just, and it will continue to happen. Yeah. So, but that's, yeah. How do you balance. survive a renovation? <laughs> because oh. that is a test. That is a true test of a relationship a right there. Yeah. And we've done a few now. The biggest one obviously being the farm, but we had the apartment in Surrey Hills. The farm's been the biggest one. And I think, Every argument we've had over the past three and a half years has been to do with that, which tells me two things. One, we're both very passionate about yes. this thing, which yeah. is a good thing. He's very creative as well, but he's all yep. garden animals outside. So yep. we have a very strict line at the front door. Okay. Inside. <laughs> Yours, mine. Got it. Correct. Okay. But then where it gets blurred is where I come out in the garden at the front, you know, up in the paddocks, go for God, do what you want to do. But he's like, you're in my territory. And then I say to him, but I'm overall creative director. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then boom, 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 Editor it's on. At large. Okay. C correct. <laughs> correct. Stylist, you know, come out. Yeah. No, this needs to change. Oh, okay. I want topiary there. No, I want a white flower, not a yellow one. Mm, okay. So, but for the most part, it's been good. Okay. It's been good. Okay. But every argument has been, you know, the pet size of the pebble for the driveway. That took yeah. me three months because when I'm doing things for myself, mm. very hard. Yes. Because you have to I live with it. You have to live with yeah. it. And I see so much every day. I'm doing things for other people. I'm seeing the best of the best. No, it has to be this. This is my portfolio. Yes. Yes. So it's hard. But then he kind of just goes, you just need to choose a pebble for the driveway. <laughs> I'm like, is it 10 mil or is it 20 mil? Is it wide or is it off wide? It's very it's important. important. It's a big driveway. It is. I get it. I do get it. <laughs> so that's where he gets very frustrated. Okay. So it's definitely more his side to me, getting yes. frustrated with me. But that's just because how I'm a perfectionist, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to our home. It's it's tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. But I guess you just have to bigger picture it. Just bigger go, picture. we're not saving lives. Yeah. We're choosing pebbles. Co correct. It's going to be fine. I can see pebbles right here. They're a good size. Thank you so much. <laughs> just relief all around. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> okay, first of all, mm. here's another deep picture yes, for please. you. Yes, please. I love a deep. Do you believe we have a soul? Mm-hmm. And yes. if you do, okay, yes? yes. And what do you do to take care of your soul? What do you think? <sighs> Define soul. What, what is soul to you? Uh, soul is that intangible element. It's how you feel when you're calm, when you're at peace. The, the physical body is always going and mine is definitely at a heightened pace 24 seven. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of like a bird. I go, 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 go. And then I sort of stop and I just crash for a day. And then I'm like back, 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 back. So I've had to work on that, especially in the last 12 months, two years, because everything going on with the reno and, and work and all that kind of things and, and, and social media, digital world, mm. it's a lot going on for everyone. And a pandemic. Quite and a smart. pandemic, correct. <laughs> Definitely, and quite spiritual. So I do ritualistic things. So meditation, and I don't do it enough. I try to do it once a day, but mm -hmm. twice a day would be ideal. Mm -hmm. So I have guided meditation. I use Headspace, the app, which is awesome. I was, I literally did it in the car before I was, I was sitting down because I didn't have time this morning. I was at the gym. Exercise is also the biggest thing. Um, but then again, because I'm all about the home, it's all about creating those rituals. So I have my beautiful incense, Palo Santo, a beautiful candle, creating nourishing food. And I know that all sounds a bit kind of hippie or whatever, but it's about having those, those rituals and making them not just quick, 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 we've got to make this and blah, 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 you know, put a candle on, put some nice music on. Music mm -hmm. is like the biggest 
a big part of my world. Mm-hmm. I grew up in performing arts and I had a scholarship to McDonald's School of Performing Arts and, and that definitely now dictates quite a bit of my kind of creative process. So I always have something on, I've got different playlists for cooking, it's jazz or it's, you know, whatever it is. So all those different ritualistic elements is a huge part of nourishing the soul. Mm-hmm. It sounds very, you know, no, but it, it really is, yeah. it really is. How do you know when you're off? When you're a little off uh, center? I just feel it physically in my body, yeah. achy, whatever it is, withdrawn, you know, just work, work, work. Cause I am a workaholic, um, but you just, you feel it. And then you've got to, you've got to get outside. You've got to get away from the computer, the phone, whatever it is. I go out and sit on the lawn mower and I mow lawn for three hours, you know, or I go and meditate or mm-hmm. I try and do something nice for me, but it's really hard. You've actually got to stop and go, oh, I know I need to do something. Mm-hmm. Like I had this epiphany last week. So I was like, what do you want to do? Like, let's do something fun. And I was like, right, what do I do? <laughs> you don't know? I'm like, no. Do I get a massage? Do I, what do I do? Yeah, I'm the same. It, it's hard. I panic. It, you panic. If I've got an hour spare, yeah. I don't know. You're like, what to oh, do well, just do some yeah. emails or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And so you really have to make it a point mm-hmm. to stop, meditate, go out, see a friend, call a friend, see my nieces and nephews, and, and you bring that kind Reconnect. of balance back. Yeah, you know, because rest is also a part of those things. Absolutely, that kind of self care and soul nourishing. Yeah, and yeah. We forget about that. It's a very important part of it. Yeah, we think exercise, cook, like do that, but that's go, go, all. Go, go. Yeah, yeah. But then rest is also absolutely the biggest one. And I love my sleep. <laughs> I love my sleep. Are you good at sleeping? Oh, I love it. I have my essential oil burner with <laughs> yes, lavender and yes. my crystals. And you, again, because you know the home, the home space is very much that kind of cocoon. That's where you need to create a beautiful, safe environment. And so that's a big one. Again, it all goes back to nourishing the soul. Yeah. But it was just, everyone's everyone's just it's a busy world. Yeah. It's that's a busy true. world. Yeah. And it's amazing what mm. you pull in from your past into your current life. Yeah. Hey, like you, you were talking about, um, you know, your identity and, and finding mm. that and figuring that out and. How you how you grew up and what your home did and yeah. your parents and how they nurtured and loved you like you pull those things and totally. and equally the positive as well as the negative and you pull those things in it's not until you get older and you start to focus in on yourself and open mm. up your soul to yeah. these teachings and learnings that you really kind of discover yourself yes and yeah maybe you've been because you for so long were covering up who you truly were Mm. busy feels comfortable to you because you're like okay just lay a layer layer paper over it yeah yes and sometimes when you are you have that alone time or you you're meditating Mm. and then you're like i don't know about this feeling because it's Mm. exposing things that you're trying to hide for so long and then all of a sudden it's right there correct for you to deal with because you're feeling it inside you know you're just you're not you don't have the noise you've got quiet you've got Mm. calm and so you've got true thoughts, which is un- terrifying. <laughs> un- terrifying. Yeah. But also you need you need to do it. Yeah. You need to have that yeah. connection with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's how you get deeper and that's how you, yeah. you grow and you learn. You become better. And, yep. Become more aware of yeah. the world around you, other people around you. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. It so really you, is. You're better in your internal yourself, but then you're also giving the best version of yourself. And you can be better for people. Yeah, absolutely. Too. Yeah. Everyone around you. Yeah. Not so defensive and. Yeah, exactly. It's easy to get there. It is because we are on that. We're on that. On that hamster wheel. And it is easier to yeah. do that. Yeah, it's absolutely. easier to just blame everyone else for everything and correct and not think. Okay, what can I do to? Yeah, better myself. Better myself. Therefore, take a bit of the blame. Yeah, yeah. And work on things yeah. that I need That's to. That's hard. Work. Taking the blame is very hard. It's very hard. It's very hard. As Michael tells me, like, you're never wrong. You never say you're wrong. Like, no, no, I think I've gotten much better at that. <laughs> Gone through everything with him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which is Do you also find that hard, hard to, to say sorry for things? I used to. Mm. I'm getting better at now. I'm getting better at listening and seeing things from his point of view, other people's point of view. Okay, that makes sense. We've got a difference of opinions or whatever it may be, and that's fine. Mm. That's totally fine. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's, it's hard. a hard one. It's hard. It is. But you have to. Yeah. Humble. Now, I believe that mm. the cream rises 
I believe the cream rises. Love it. What I mean by that. Not in our coffee. Is the... It's tea, but you know, could we had a coffee. coffee on yeah. tea with tea, yours. Sorry, sorry. Steve Caldoni, don't swear. I'm more of a tea. <laughs> No, I do I love won't. coffee too. I do. I love I'm, them both. I love coffee, but I, I have probably more tea every night. Just before. Yep. I'm a tea drinker yeah. at night for sure. Yes. We are the same person after but all. I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just wait that out. Yeah. The cream rises. Mm. And what I mean by that mm. is that the best part seems to find its way to the top. And mm. you have managed to do that in your life and career. You are a big deal. <laughs> I'm not, but thank you. <laughs> well, I think you're a bit, you are, you're a big deal in, in the styling interiors world. In the making world. life pretty. Yeah. I'll take it. Fine. And yeah. your reputation precedes you everywhere you. you go, like well, wherever I go, you talk about Steve Pardoni and, and it's, <laughs> it is just like, people just love you and adore you. Um, not only for your work, but Thank for you. you as a person, which I think is equally as important to mm. have, have the both sides of the, the coin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I don't believe that nice guys finish last. I Agree. I truly don't. I don't think you have to be unkind to be good at no what you do. No way. And to be honest, it's it's been the other way. Like I, you need to be assertive and I'm ambitious and I'm a workaholic and, I, and I, I'm a driven, but all throughout it, I tried and I hope, you know, that's probably the nicest thing anyone could say to me, what you just sort of said to me now, is that people think you're a nice person. Mm -hmm. You can be successful without having to be that aggressive person or whatever it may be. If you're good at what you do and you love what you do and you have passion, that will just come through and you will succeed. But it's it's about but that balance and just being true to who you are. Do you think that is what gets you to the top? For me, again, all those sort of tick boxes, driven, ambitious, need to be the best I can be because I felt not and I didn't think I was gonna have that growing up or whatever, struggling with my own thoughts. Who am I as a person? What's my passion? I know I live and breathe interiors and home and lifestyle. And so putting all those things into effect and, and using that, that's how I become, or how I think I've become successful, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the main, that's the best thing that I can kind of give. Be true to yourself, have a sense of your own style. Um, you know, what separates you from other people? You know, I know I've got a key style. I can do lots of different things because I've done a myriad of different styles and trend pages or whatever it is. But at the core of my style, and I call, call it my blueprint, mm -hmm. and everyone has a blueprint. Mm -hmm. You know, I walk in here, I see the style of your home and, and it reflects you and I know it because I know, you know, the house and I know you. That is your core blueprint. It can shift and it will shift over time, just like we change and we move. Um, but having that sense of identity and sense of style, that's what kind of set me in my own little lane. Am I doing anything so brand new? There's probably someone in, Ethiopia who might have the same style. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. But what makes you, what sets you apart? Mm -hmm. And and that's for me, what has kind of got me to where I am today. Yeah. We're going to talk styling for a second. Yes. Great. <sighs> where do I start? There's um, a million questions. Too many. But guys, yes. if you have questions, go to stevecordoni.com. <laughs> Great. And Steve all Cordoni, of yeah. the things are there. Instagram, mm -hmm. you will see all of the things. Yes. Um, Tutorials go for gold. Go for gold. Yeah. Today was not, was not technically about that, but I have a few questions. What is something that people do mm. that turns your stomach? <laughs> that you're like, um, <gasps> please stop doing that. Oh. What are we doing wrong, Steve? For me, styling in essence is that cherry on the top moment, right? Yes. So it's all the beautiful little accessories and objects and things you found in your travels and, and creating a home basically. So a big part of that is editing. You could have a beautiful console and I'm looking at your console behind here and it's beautifully starred because it's grouped and it's edited. Yes. Rather than just things da -da 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 along, yeah, you know? all the way along. So you yeah. really have to group and create what we call in the world is a vignette. So it's a little grouping of things, which is, you know, in basic terms, think about three different, one, two, three, stack of books with a candle on top, a vase of flowers and a small little ashtray or whatever it is. Think about those three and then think about three heights, high, medium, low. Mm -hmm. There's your vignette. Great. Great. Okay. That's just boom, boom, 101. Vignette. Yes. Vignette it. Yeah. Just okay. editing. Yep. Yeah. And just, mm. yeah, editing. Editing. Love that. Less editing. is more, but not always. Not, not always. always. But, you know, you might have four things, five things, six things on the coffee table, and they're just sort of splayed out on a rectangle coffee table. Grab a tray, sit them in there, create sort of, again, three zones. Mm -hmm. Edited. Okay. Perfect. Peace. Um, peace. Um, I need to talk about your... <laughs> 
trees. I call them trees yes. because oh, it's basically yes. like an entire tree it comes is. into your home yes. and that goes into a vase. Mm -hmm. Like you've never seen a vase so big and you've never seen a branch <laughs> so big. No. Talk me through. I feel the like trees. they're getting bigger and bigger. I love it. I'm like, I where can so I go much. from here? Everyone's like, I love the big things. I'm trying to do it at home. Okay, well, I've got to go bigger now, don't I? <laughs> it's like I'll chop down a whole, whole tree. Where was this inspo? Oh, I just love, A, I love the verticality, yep. you know, drawing your eye up. Mm -hmm. And also I love drama at the home, in the yeah. home. Yeah. You know, just create a moment, a focal point. Yes. I love it. I have two moments. In the lounge room, we have a beautiful central table with all books around it. And so most of the time I like to have a big heroic floral or green moment mm -hmm. and then also in the kitchen so and it's probably the question i get asked the most mm -hmm. on the gram mm -hmm. how do those damn branches stay and balance so get the biggest one you can a really heavy footed bars fill it up with water and just sort of keep cutting put them in if they're sort of leaning over take an inch off keep going find a balance yep done okay yeah. until it just stays there until it just stays and there and don't go near it and <laughs> Kids, I don't have kids, so it's very different here. I realize that it's a whole different oh, thing, yeah. but it just it just creates that drama. And it's yes. like, what, you know, draw the eye in, draw the eye up. Even if you've got low ceilings, take it right to the ceiling, mm -hmm. make it touch, and it will really draw the eye up. Okay. I'm gonna get can, so many Where punches. are the cicatrices? <laughs> we need a chainsaw, basically. These roofs are very high. Yeah. I'm gonna need Correct. like a nine meter branch. We need a full tree. <laughs> Me a tree, me a tree, yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm going to finish with one last question. Mm. If you, and this has been an incredible conversation. Oh, thank, thank you, you for going there with me yeah. and telling, sharing those parts of you. So I've actually done an interview like that. No, I really love nice. that because yeah. I think you, there's specialness in you. There really mm, is. And very sweet. you get that from, from your page and obviously anything that you do. But yeah. there's, so, there's layers, you know, there's, there's layers. so many layers yeah. and... Yeah. But it's good to, to talk about those things and yeah. dig them Unravel. up so people get the real story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but here's a shallow question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get rid of that. If you, you go. Okay. Say you're built. I mean, Rosdale Farm is, yes. I mean, please, oh, that is you. the dream. But if there was a bigger dream yes. than Rosdale, Ooh. imagine you could just move in and it was everything you could, you, mm -hmm. you didn't have to do the work. Oh. You didn't have to have the fights with Michael. This you could just, <laughs> you could, it's yours. You've done it. It's the dream. Great. If you could have one like extravagant, mm. ridiculous, almost mm. money can't buy piece thing, something yes. in the home, what yes. would it be? How long have you got? <laughs> Just you one. Got? Just one. Okay, that's very hard. <laughs> um, do you know what? Probably a great big chandelier or pendant or light. Okay. Like lights for me are just, and pendants, and whether it's a four lamp or lamp, they're just these sculptural things that create this drama. Yeah. So that for me, something incredible. Just something OTT, OTT. like real diamonds. Yeah, but look, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know, anything. Something that I found in the back streets of Italy or Paris yeah. and just okay. ship it over and, yeah. you know? Yeah. But just I could go on, but we'll just stop there. Okay. We'll stop at all. A chandelier. Yeah, a chandelier. Great. Love Great. it. Steve Cordoni, thank you Sebastian. so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's been beautiful to talk to you. Likewise. Thank you, sweet. Cheers.